everyone, I'm Allie with the Potomac Bee Company and I'm going to show you how to do a Russian spiral. The Russian spiral is a nice stitch that you can actually stitch together. That's what I'm going to show you. This one has a clasp here. Um, you can go to any of our Helix videos or any of our other seed beading videos that show how to finish this off if you do want to add a clasp. But I'm going to be showing you how to make it just a nice roll-on bangle bracelet. For this bracelet, minimum materials you're going to need is a size 15 OC bead and a size 8 OC bead. I'm going to switch mine up a little bit and kind of make it spiral just to show you the difference. I'm going to be using three colors of 8 O's and then one color of 15 O's. The three colors of 8 O's that I have are a matte aqua AB. I have the um, matte jet AB or the matte black AB and I have the silk silver lined uh, sapphire color as well as silver 15 O's. For thread I'm going to be using .006 wildfire beading thread and with the colors that I've chosen I'm going to be using the green thread and I also have a size 12 English beading needle. You can do it with a 10 but it's going to be a little bit hard to go through some of those 15 O's so a size 12 even though it's more difficult to thread will go a lot faster when you're actually sewing onto those beads. So we're going to get started with this and we're going to be dumping out and making piles for the start of our Russian spiral. So to start out what I've done is I've actually threaded my needle and I've cut about five feet of beading thread. You're going to be using more than this. It is because it's in a round. It is a rather thread intensive bracelet and it's not a very quick moving bracelet so don't be discouraged by that. Um, I put my thread on my needle and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be picking up a set of three beads and they're going to be followed by two of my 15 O's. So I'm going to pick up one of my aqua, two of my 15 O's, one of my jet AB, and black AB, and one of my silver lined blue here. I'm going to thread them onto my thread and needle and let them drop down close to the end of my project or the end of my thread rather. Once I have them there, I'm going to actually tie them in a round. You can either tie them in a round if you're doing a clasp or you can do like I'm going to do because I'm going to go in and I'm going to make this a bracelet that you can just slide on. I'm going to sew through the, almost making a stop bead, I'm sewing through my first set of my 8 and my 2 15 of the Aqua and I'm going to pull nice and tight. You can also put a stop bead on here or you can even continue to go around to make it a little bit tighter. That's kind of up to you. Also around just to make it a little bit tighter so you can see. And that's going to tighten that up a little bit. So this pattern you can do in any groupings of three. Um, so you can do six beads, six groupings, you can do 12 groupings, nine groupings. It's kind of up to you, but you do need it to be divisible by three. What I want to do now is I want to make sure that my thread and my needle are coming out one of my first of my 15 O beads, which is going to be next to one of my 11 or one of my 8 O's. So it's going to be coming out basically between a set of 15 O beads. Once I'm coming out that set of 15 O beads, I'm going to start by doing another set. How I'm going to keep track of which colors I'm doing so that way I can get my spiral is whatever color is next to the seed bead that I'm putting out, that's what I'm going to put on first. So I'm going to put on that silver lined blue and then I'm going to do two 15s. I'm going to skip over my 15 and my 8 and I'm going to go to the next 15 and sew through. So that way again my needle is going to be coming out between two 15s. Next I'm going to put on another one of my beads and I just went through or I just skipped over one of the aqua colors. So I'm going to put an aqua followed by two 15 O's. And I'm going to sew through the 15 O next to the black AB. And pull nice and tight. Right now it's just going to kind of look a little messy until you get going. Next on goes again one of my black ABs. 
two of my silver 15 ounce and I'm gonna pick up again that first 15 OB that I was coming through that's what I'm gonna sew through so I've gone the whole way around sewing through the second of the 15 O's it kind of looks like a funky shape right here it'll start to get a little bit more rounded what we do need to do is do what's called a step up in order to step up what that's going to do is take us to the next row we're coming out that original 15 O that I was coming out of I'm going to go through my first 8 O and my first 15 O of my second go round so it was that sapphire color that I put on first that silver line sapphire and I'm going through my first 15 O that's going to be how you step up so every time after you get done putting on your three rotations of your beads you're going to do that step up next what I'm going to do is I'm coming out that silver lined blue again so I'm going to put on a silver lined blue and the 15 O's skip over to your next turquoise one and you're going to go through the first set of your 15 out and I'm going to sew through there and pull tight for that one next because I'm coming out of that turquoisey one I'm going to put the turquoisey on two 15 O's and I'm going to pick up the 15 O next to my jet AB one or my black AB keep wanting to say jet. I pull my thread through there. You want to make sure that the bead that you're putting on is always above the last bead. So when you're creating your little um, when you're creating your little start here, you always want to make sure what you should start to see is that spiral effect happening. So that way you keep the base beads at the bottom and you're going with the next beads as you build. So that way you're going to see basically two of the same color next to one another because I'm coming out of the bead next to my jet a or my black AB I'm gonna put on another black bead and again I'm going through the first of the 15 O's that are next to my silver line blue there because this is gonna be my third rotation and I want to make sure when I finish my row that I'm going through those and I'm gonna come up between these two beads so I'm gonna go through and up right through in between those two beads. When you pull this, even though we're only two rows in, you can see that color spiral starting to happen a little bit. And I did my step up by going through those three beads at once. So I'm coming off of a silver lined blue. On goes a silver lined blue. My two 15 O's. And then I'm going to go through the 15 0 next to the aqua AB. Pulling my thread through, making sure that last bead stays to the top. And after you get a couple rotations, it becomes quite easy and kind of mindless. Um, but it is a little bit hard at the start to see what you're doing. Some people will find it easier to go on a dowel and put a dowel in the middle of this so you can kind of keep track a little bit once I'm coming out here through that 15 0 I'm gonna add another one of my jet ones and then I know that my rotation is done so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through that 15 0 there at the bottom next to my silver line and at the same time I'm always gonna go through my silver line and my first 15 0 that I put on on this row so if you do do a three color, it's kind of nice because you know exactly when you're going to step up because it's always going to be the same every time. So ready for my fourth row. Coming out that blue, and blue always goes on first. So I really should kind of reorganize that, but that's okay. Skipping over, coming out my 15 between my aquas. And at the end of each row, kind of give a nice tug on that so you make sure that it stays nice and tight coming out the aqua, on goes the aqua coming out the AB black 
So on is going to go the black AB. Followed by 215 ohms. I'm going to pick up that 11 O there next to my silver line blue. Go through that one as well as my first silver line blue that I put on on this row as well as my first 15 ohm. Got a little knot there. Happens. And I'm going to pull this all the way through. I'm going to continue on then with my pattern, just of starting with my blue sapphire or my blue silver lined, going through the bead next to my Ada, making sure that sits above. And you can see here it's not getting a huge rotation, it's staying pretty small of a bangle. I don't want it to be huge. If you do want it to be bigger, like I said, you can either use bigger beads, you could use sixes and elevens, or what you could do is you could use six beads as your starting rotation rather than doing your four beads or three beads. Again, whatever you do just needs to be divisible by three. So I'm going to keep going here, getting my pattern. And you can see that spiral starting to happen with the different colors and it is a stitch that is fairly flexible that's why it's nice for a roll-on bangle but you will see the thread a tiny bit so you want to choose your thread color wisely and you're just going to keep on going and keep on building to make it bigger and bigger right along your bracelet if you do notice that that spiral is getting a little bit out of color order that's going to help you to know where you need to go. So that way you know exactly what beads you need to put on next. And I'm just going to keep building and building right along my bracelet. Or it could be a necklace. This is a great one that they look great as necklaces. So the Russian spiral um, is a great necklace stitch because you can do um, put bigger pendants on it. You can even make a couple different slides and just have it be a chain. You can go on. You can also use 11 O's in place of the 8 O's. It makes it really fine and tiny. And again, I'm just going to keep sewing right around, getting my little pattern in place. So I'm going to continue working. And I'll let you guys continue working as well. And you can see Every time you kind of pick up the next stitch, it pulls a little bit. What I like to do is give a nice tight pull after that to keep it going in its round. So you can see as I get further along, my pattern starting to happen here with some of those different blue and green colors and um, that just a nice kind of color variety. It's not a huge difference in color, which is what I was going for, um, but it's enough that you can tell where you are as you're starting. So I'm getting longer and I'm coming out of one of my blue beads. I just started a new row, a new row, and I'm gonna pick up the bead next to my aqua bead. And so since I skipped over that one, I know I need to add that one next. I'm skipping over a black AB bead. So I know I'm gonna do that one next in my rotation. After that one, because that's my third bead always to go on, I know that I have to step up. I'm going to step up going through my 15 0, my silvery blue, and the 15 0 next to it. You can tell where to step up because you're going to have two eighths that look like they're right next to one another, and that's going to help you to know where to step up. And you're just going to continue on with your pattern, always adding that rotation of three, and then sewing through the first. 15 0 next to one of your eight colors. If you do do this in one color rather than multiple colors, like the example here, it's a really pretty elegant bracelet. Uh, you just want to make sure when you're finished with your group of three, it's a little bit harder for beginners for doing one color to make sure you do this step up here. So it's a good idea if you need to 
lay out initially if you want to do it in one color initially lay out groups of three so you know exactly when you're done each row you can also I was saying how you can switch this out for sixes and elevens if you'd rather um, another cool idea and they make a great bracelet is doing a bugle bead in place of the eights or you can do an eight and a bugle so you can kind of rotate which ones you're doing and that gives a really pretty look as well so it's a nice versatile stitch again you can change up the bead sizes and if you want to you could also use two different colors of your 15 OC beads and that would help to know exactly where you're going through as well so if you're having a little trouble you can use two different 15 OC colors and then you know they're always going to go through the same color bead and that's why I did this with multiple colors of 8-0's so I know that every time I step up it's when I'm done with my jet or my black AB because that's my third bead in my rotation so again as I finish stitching here I'm gonna add my black AB and then I know it's my step up again those two colors are going to look next to one another. Going between there, getting the 15 out, getting the 8, and then the first 15 out that I put on this row. Give a nice little tight pull. I'm continuing to get my little Russian spiral. So I have about three and a half inches done and I need to add some new thread. I'm going to show you how I simply add thread um, rather than sewing back through. What I do is I take my new piece of thread and I'm going to tie that onto my existing piece. So right now I'm not using the existing piece at all for my knot. I'm just tying the new piece right around my old piece and pulling. What that allows me to do is to take that knot that I just made and move it down and up along the existing thread that was there. I'm going to give it a nice tight pull and push it down right into place where I want it to be. And then I'm going to take these two ends and I'm going to knot them together. I do like then to use a little bit of glue, but I'm not going to do that until after the fact of my knot and after I'm done my bracelet because otherwise what happens is sometimes you glue the hole shut so I have those two knots there I'm gonna do one more knot and I switch hands when I do not to try to get my knot to try to get a square knot going and then what I'm gonna do is just trim these edges down until I'm able to glue and burn them down I'm gonna then take my needle and add it to my new piece of thread and continue on with my project. Just to show you I have about another inch to go yet to connect my ends and I'm going to be connecting them where my spirals meet and that's going to get me my nice roll-on bangle. Like I said it does stretch a little bit and it has a little give um, so this is going to be a great one to just roll on or if you don't want to roll it on you can add a clasp. So now that it's long enough, I'm ready to do my connection point. And what I want to do is connect it right where the thread is coming out, basically. And to do that, I want to make sure that my colors line up in my spiral. So you can see here that they don't quite line up right there. So what I'm going to do is add a couple more beads. And I'm coming out of my blue bead here. I'm going to add my blue and my two 15 O's. So through my next one here and then I'm going to check my line up here to see if they line up and I'm going to sew these right on the line so they line up so what I'm going to do now is I'm ready to do my turquoise bead so I'm going to pick up the turquoise bead on the other side and sew through the next two beads so I'm sewing through my turquoise bead as well as the next two beads in the line. When I pull this tight then, what's going to happen is the other end is going to come right to it and it's basically going to be linking it together right there at that point. I'm going to go around then the stitch basically 
and my bead is going to come out here. My thread's going to come out between my blue bead and my 15 out, which were next to that teal bead that I went through. And then I'm going to jump up here to this side to the blue and go through the blue as well. So I'm basically stitching one side to the other side. See there, it's going to make that link go together. I'm going to drop down then to over here and I'm going to stitch through my jet and my black AB bead as well as the next two beads in line. Pull nice and tight. And it's going to link it to there. Back up to the top. So through two seed beads and a jet bead. And pull. So you can see it's starting to link it together. Right here then I'm going to sew back down through. After I'm coming out those seed bead there, I'm going to sew down through that same teal one. That was the original. So I've gone the whole way around now, kind of linking that bracelet together. Once I get it nice and tight, you can go around several times if you'd like. What I'm going to do is actually get to the point where my two threads are meeting. So my two threads are meeting here. And all I'm going to do is give a nice tie. So I'm going to tie it once, twice. You can also put a bead right at the roll-on point. That looks nice when you use like a bigger bead, either a large hole bead or just a decorative bead. After do I do a couple knots, I'm going to do the same thing with my thread and needle, basically knotting this off as well. And I'm just going to sew back through some of those 15 O's. Even with a size 12 beading needle, it's going to get a little bit tight because those 15 O's don't really want to go back through again. Once I have this all finished and I'm ready to kind of finish off my design, all I'm going to do is go back to that point where I added thread as well as this point where I did the connection and I'm going to take my super glue and I'm going to pick up that knot right there, dab the super glue there and I'm going to pick up this knot back here that I had and do a dab of glue right there and my connection point. Let that dry a little bit and then I can burn it down or I can cut it off. Now that I'm finished my bracelet, and you can see it just kind of slides on and will roll on very easily. Um, I usually make it about an inch bigger than my wrist. This one is a little bit bigger than that, so that way I can um, give it to someone if they if I want with a bigger wrist, because I have a rather tiny wrist. Um, and it's just going to slide on and off and roll on and off your wrist. It looks really great when you double up, so you make a bunch and double them up. You can also make it thicker and use some of our cup buttons at the ends, just as you would a bead or any sort of bead cap that you could use if you want to do it in a set of six rather than a set of three. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed this and you like the look of it. Again, they look really nice when they're doubled up on the wrist, so hopefully you make multiples. If you're looking for supplies, you can visit us um, online at potomacbeads.com. Check out our locations page, and our helpful staff would love to help you at one of our locations. If you can't get into one of our stores, you can check us out at thebeadco.com and visit us on there as well. And check out the other YouTube videos also if you want to see some of the different designs that we make. So thanks a lot for watching and have a great rest of your day beating.